Let's look at the sources and occurrences of alkenes. The sources and occurrences. So, how is it possible for us to obtain alkenes? How can we be able to get alkenes? So, tunaipataji yani how how do we get alkenes in the environment? You can see some of them they occur naturally, some of them we can be able to extract them, some of them can be able to manufacture, some of them can be able to be obtained through fermentation. Like the three most common natural sources of the sources of alkenes, first of all we have the natural gas. So this mainly consists of natural occurring hydrogen gas, which is mainly methane gas, we can have ethane gas, we can have propane gas and the butane. Basically, the, the, first four, the first four alkenes, so they, those are gases. And then the last, uh, the last six, they are liquids. So the first four alkenes can be able to be obtained naturally. Like, for example, uh, we can be able to obtain it in the environment, whereby methane is the largest, methane occupies the largest portion, about 77 to 92%, followed by ethane, followed by butane, and then finally we have propane. So they can be obtained naturally from the natural gas. Like, for example, you see, um, in Form 1, we studied about air. Air has different components, whereby we had the other gases. So the other gases, these gases also follow, fall in the other gases, whereby methane occupies a larger portion uh, in the other gases. So apart from that, apart from natural gas, we can also be able to obtain it through biogas. So we have studied biogas, which mainly deals with the fermentation, uh, fermentation of organic matter. So if you ferment organic matter, we are going to obtain biogas, which is mainly used in cooking, um, or rather we can say it is used mostly in domestic, in domestic, uh, domestic works. Like for example, we have cooking, we have running of machines, etc. So in the biogas also we see that methane gas occupies a larger portion of the biogas. So at least methane occupies about, about 60 to 70, 60 to 70, 75 percent of the biogas as in whole. So we also have the other gases which is propane, butane, and ethane. But methane occupies the larger portion of the, of the biogas as it is manufactured. So apart from that, we have crude oil. So we have natural gas, the occurrences. We can have it through natural gas, biogas. We can also have it from crude oil, whereby crude oil, this is a major source of alkanes. It mainly consists of a mixture of many alkane family members. That is the first three, uh, the methane, ethane, propane, butane. So it can be separated into different components by using fractional distillation. Whereby fractional distillation separates different mixtures which have very close boiling points. So we can use fractional distillation to separate these different gases that we have. So these different components since they have different boiling points, therefore it makes it possible to be able to separate them. So you are going first of all to obtain methane, after that you are going to obtain uh, the propane, after that you are going to obtain ethane rather, then propane, then butane. Whereby we see that the boiling point of hydrocarbons uh, increases as the number of carbon atoms increases. So the, as the number of carbon atoms increases, the boiling point also increases, meaning that we are going to obtain methane as the first one, then ethane as the second one, then propane, and then lastly we are going to obtain the butane. So basically, how is fractional distillation carried, of crude oil mainly carried out? We can use this distillation, we can do this distillation in the chemistry laboratory, or we can also do it in the factories, in the oil processing factories, so how they, they are able to do it in order to separate the different components but you can also do it in the laboratory. So in the laboratory, we see that in the fractional separation of crude oil in the laboratory, we can take 50 centimeters cubed of crude oil and add it to the boiling tube. So you take 50 centimeters cubed of crude oil, we add it in the boiling tube, and then we continue the experiment. So in this experiment, we can use sand. So we use sand in order to prevent the breaking of the, the, breaking of the apparatus because very strong heating will be, will be taking place. So at least the sand will be, it will be essential since it will be absorbing the excess heat. So you use sand in order to prevent the breaking of this apparatus as the experiment is taking place. So in the laboratory, we can set up the experiment as you can see whereby we have the strong heating, we have the sand below the round bottom flask, then we have the crude oil and then we have the thermometer to tell us which gas is being separated. 
So the thermometer is very essential in fractional distillation because it tells us that we are in this, uh, we are in this temperature. So if you see fumes, then it will mean that it is this component which is leaving. And then um, after that, uh, the gas will be condensed and then it will be collected, as you can see in the diagram. So for this distillation, we can see that, uh, uh, like under the distillation procedure, the distillate collected might be having different colors and different smells. Even though we will collect a distillate, somewhat we'll notice that there are some different colors in the distillate, and we can also notice that there are different smells in the distillate. So this means that the different constituents that we'll have separated in the laboratory might be having some minor impurities in them. So it might be having some impurities. It will mean that to separate these gases, it will require some, some very careful or accurate or some, some very powerful machinery in order to be able to obtain a pure sample of the gas that you want. So this component separated might be having impurities. That's why you might realize that this component you have obtained has different colors and smell from the original. So it might be having some different impurities. So in an exam, you might be asked, after fractional distillation of crude oil, it was realized that there were different smells and different colors in the sample collected. Explain this phenomenon. So you'll say that uh, this phenomenon is as a result of impurities in the samples being collected because of maybe instrumental errors, because of maybe environmental errors, because of maybe mm, impure samples which were being used, etc., and etc. So uh, that is that. Uh, as you can see, this is a table. So this is a table which shows the alkanes. It shows the members of the alkanes, all the members of the alkanes from methane to decane, and also their structure. So this is the structural formula, so you can see the structural formula. So it's just the structural formula which has now, the molecular formula has been expanded to form the structural formula. As well, you can see that we have the boiling, the different boiling points that we have. So you'll realize that as the number of carbon atom increases, also the boiling point increases. So the boiling point mainly increases with the increase in the number of carbon atoms. So if you have been asked also in exam, draw the molecular structure of, let's say for example, ethane. Draw the molecular structure of ethane, that is what you should be drawing. If you have been asked, draw the structural formula of ethane, they want you to expand. So expand the carbon. So don't say we have two carbons, C2. Expand the carbons, break down the carbons into the structures. Like for example, the best example is decane. Decane, we have C10H22. So each carbon has been, has been set aside on its own with its own hydrogen atoms. So again, you should know that the short carbon atoms compounds have low boiling points and the long chains have a very high boiling point. So the boiling point basically increases with increase in the number of carbon atoms. So don't forget that. You might be asked a question in an exam. Explain why decane has a higher boiling point than methane. A simple question as that. Explain why decane, or rather, let's use gases. Let's first of all use gases, the first four. Explain why butane has a higher boiling point than methane, or than propane. Let's use propane. Explain why butane has a larger boiling point than propane. So the answer to this is very simple. It's because butane has many carbon atoms as compared to, as compared to propane. Also, you can say that Butane has many carbon atoms and bonds and covalent bonds as compared to propane, which has less carbon atoms and less bonds as compared to butane. Just say anything to mention that it has more carbon atoms and more bonds. Therefore, it will have a higher boiling point. Propane, say everything. It has less carbon atoms and less bonds as compared to butane. And your answer will be correct. So it's just as simple as that. So, in addition to that, we see that as the boiling point increases, as the boiling point of these substances increases, the hydrocarbons increases, as the boiling point increases, the viscosity and color intensity of these substances also increases. Viscosity, it means that the ability of liquid to be able to flow. So the ability of liquid to be able to flow is the one which is called viscosity. 